Hey guys. Hello. So, uh, so first I wanted to thank a couple of people. Um, the EFF, first of all, I know you guys are here for subverting uh, the World of Warcraft API. It's now extending the World of Warcraft API. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank the goons too. Those guys are awesome um, getting us here and taking care of all the speakers. Like, uh, they, they function on tips and beer, so, you know. Uh, I'm Chris Moody. This is James Ludke. Um, and uh, this is our talk. Go ahead. Okay. Which is broken. Uh, so if there are any Blizzard employees, <laughs> yeah. or if there are any fanboys in the audience, this NDA applies to you. Um, you guys can feel free to read it. Uh, but So uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you would do the same to us. Um, so uh, I'm Chris Mooney. I work for a or on a volunteer on a nonprofit. Um, so does James. Uh, we both work with uh, Gearman. Um, James works on Drizzle. We're C software engineers in the high performance, high availability space. Um, uh, we wrote this code together, and um, and we have day jobs. Yes. So. <laughs> Uh, in the talk, um, basically, uh, we're going to run a demo. We were originally hoping to do this in parallel, so you guys would have a demo screen and a slide screen, but uh, that was kind of complicated to do. So we're going to try and speed this up a little bit um, so everybody kind of get ready to take in a bunch, and uh, then we'll get to the demo, which is the fun part to watch. Um, let's see. Uh, so. What is the World of Warcraft API? Uh, so for those of you that don't know, it's basically um, a application programming interface for UI developers, um, people that uh, want to change the way the UI looks, uh, change the way it functions. Um, Blizzard has sort of uh, made this a plug-in slash uh, add-on uh, way to extend the UI because it doesn't look very good. Um, it's basically written in Lua, which is an uh, object-oriented scripting language, and um, you load add-ons in the game, they change the way it looks and feels, and uh, uh, this is important because you can get a lot of uh, information out of the uh, environment, and that allows you to take certain actions, and then you can uh, inject inputs back into the environment, uh, which is really, really important to making this code work. So the UI in the 2.0 patch, so for those of you who ever played World of Warcraft before Burning Crusades and your old school and it just came out, uh, you used to be able to uh, make a function uh, like nuke player and then uh, you could create this cast spell by name fireball and you'd uh, make a macro slash nuke player, bind that to a key and uh, you could just from a key press cast a spell like that. Uh, without macros in Lua, in the API language that they had provided for you. Uh, and that looks a little bit like, uh, see this pre-seal function over here? Uh, you go through your party members, determine who needs uh, health, and then down here, I'm sorry for you guys that I'm neglecting this side of the thing, but I'll try and. Uh, down here, there's a target unit and a cast spell by name function. Uh, so right in that area, oh look, I can't even look at, uh, yeah, that's all you're going to get. Um, yeah, so uh, this allowed certain add-ons like Decursive, uh, One Hit Wonder, uh, the code that we had originally written to work. Um, people use this extensively to do all sorts of really cool things like, um, you know, determine if somebody needed heal. You could do that all programmatically from a button press. Um, uh, anyway, and then they uh, decided that they didn't want people to do that. Next slide. So. Uh, they removed stuff like uh, target unit cast spell by name um, to normal mortals like us and uh, made them protected functions, uh, which means that your add-on had to be signed by Blizzard and couldn't call the functions unless, um, unless that uh, your add-on was signed and it couldn't use them. Uh, they also changed uh, certain things like set binding click uh, so that you couldn't bind in combat. So like if you were in combat, you can't just rebind your keys quickly in combat so that you could uh, continue to cast something in your rotation or whatnot. Um, 
And uh, yeah, and so basically you see these, these functions over here, all these add-ons before too, the, one, the decursive one-hit wonder, all that stuff, all this stuff was disabled. If you guys were around then uh, and you play the game, you know what that meant. It was a big paradigm shift for both coders and, uh, and players. And they basically, this is the same function. Uh, the red here on each slide is the type of uh, function that they removed. So that was the API call, no longer worked. Uh, why'd they make the changes? Um, I'm gonna skip right down to the bottom one here. Maybe they hate us. Because <laughs> uh, we all put a lot of code into this and a lot of time and you know they just said, oh, forget it, we don't care. Uh, but really, I think it was something about um, trying to uh, stop programmatic decision making. Um, so they didn't want us uh, to basically um, you know, have some person hit a key and have it make some sort of heuristic decision about what to do. And um, yeah, it's kind of weird because everybody could do it, so it was kind of like mutually assured destruction at that point, and uh, then they removed it, um, which made us really powerful. Uh, so <laughs> uh, then there's some new terms of service changes, but for speed, I'm just going to go past those. Um, basically, if you know the game, you read them, they're sucky. Uh, so uh, our plan of attack is uh, basically um, we want to work around the protected functions, not circumvent. Um, we want to, <laughs> sorry, EFF, thank you again. Um, so uh, I know that some, you know, it's basically assigned functions uh, are algorithmically secure. It's supposed to be mathematically intractable to be able to produce a signature for your code and whatnot. And the, the awesome attack uh, that I'm sure you guys would want us to do is, uh, you know, crack that or find some sort of uh, way to do that. But um, nope, uh, that's the strongest chain in our little security problem, and we're going to just sidestep it entirely. Um, so I know that some of you may say that's cheating. Uh, there's no such thing as cheating in computer security. Uh, so we just identify our objectives and uh, find the path of least resistance. So that weakest link. Uh, and there are a few other things that are pretty important here. Um, Blizzard really, really wants you, um, or is it's pretty aggressive about prosecuting certain people. And uh, we wanted to work well within that framework. Um, again, we have day jobs and actual wives and you know, lots of other things going on in our lives. We don't want to spend a ton of time uh, trying, to, trying to break this just to have a little bit of fun. Um, so we thought that maybe, you know, trying to deal with their constant patching and upgrades uh, to binaries would be a pain. So we didn't want to just change the flow of execution in binaries. Uh, we also didn't take the protocol route. Um, we were originally planning on a bunch of this stuff, but um, we looked at the easiest solution. And uh, then there were other considerations, uh, WoW Glider and uh, just how Blizzard um, functions with the DMCA, what they've done in the past. Uh, we wanted to make sure uh, that we would steer away from anything that could be considered um, a circumvention technique. Uh, and I think I would advise all of you in the room to pay close attention to the DMCA and lessons to be learned from cases. Um, so uh, basically, um, let's see, oh, uh, they are okay with a few things. First of all, they provide you the API, and so we wanted to use that API. They gave it to us. Uh, they, it's not, you know, wrong to use it. Uh, they're okay with that. And uh, also, they're okay with, with multi-boxing. Uh, so this is the idea of having one controller that will repeat your button presses to multiple boxes. Uh, so you can have, you know, four or five mages or shamans or something like that, you hit one button and they all cast the same exact spell at the same exact time. Um, we made sure that we tried to stick within uh, all of these rules. Uh, next slide. Uh, so, um, binding keys out of combat. Uh, let me just say that this is how we did it. And uh, feel free to start reading the code. Um, there's going to be a couple slides of it. Uh, hopefully we don't go too fast, um, but the demo's way more impressive. So, um, Basically you can see this uh, profit key binding. The code is called BTP code uh, because it was a guild that we were in and they were called Behead the Profit. And uh, so over there you see that we're calling profit key bindings, which is uh, this function over here, snip. Uh, there's a bunch of detection work to determine if you're in combat or not, remember, because we can't bind keys in combat, so uh, it doesn't try to. 
And, uh, and then you go down into, and I'm having trouble reading the red, uh, which was a terrible idea to choose that, but uh, we basically, I know what this does, it takes uh, a button, uh, creates a virtual button, uh, assigns some information to it, and, uh, and then winds up down here uh, taking that button and binding it to a key press. Um, so that's the last red line. Uh, yeah, so this is the same key bindings function you're just looking at. Uh, so now we're going to map those key bindings to a color. You guys are probably starting to see what we're going to do here. And, uh, and so you've got this mapping, um, and then it's basically just a hash. It takes whatever, um, whatever key it is and maps it um, here. And then there's another uh, function up here, which I actually can't remember what this Uh, yeah, so this is going to take uh, keys and uh, bind them to RGB values. And uh, this is a bunch of uh, rolling through different keys, and we're going to bind it to a bunch of those RGB values. So then we display the colors in some frames. Uh, again, the red text over here um, basically uh, goes through and uh, allows us to call a function uh, and set that particular, so when, when you say, um, you know, cast spell fireball, it winds up uh, mapping that to a color uh, which is displayed in this frame. So this is the frame code to display um, that. And you can see basically, you know, like I said, I'm, we're kind of rushing through this, so. Uh, yep. And uh, yeah, then we replace the API function. So remember the uh, fuck blizzard, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, Love Blizzard. We don't mean it um, like profanely. We, you know, we mean it as a term of endearment. We replaced all of the <laughs> function names. Um, yeah, maybe in the beginning, out of frustration. Uh, now we, uh, you know, trying to make peace, and uh, so we replace them with this function that basically calls uh, this this mapping and winds up. Uh, displaying the color, and then you'll look down here, this um, FF, FF, FF value uh, is sort of a signaling frame for us. Um, and so this is what our new uh, um, cast spell by name and our new target unit function looks like. So up here and down here. And then uh, over on the right, you can see this is the original function. Remember they disabled it, and what we've done is put our new API calls in here. Uh, this is just uh, frames have context. You'll see this in the demo. Uh, I'll try and explain more, but uh, there are a bunch of different frames. Uh, inventory target, inventory action, uh, container, target, container action, um, up here in the top and down to like player action and whatnot. And that's for targeting and, um, and casting spells and, and whatnot. Uh, and then what we do is take outside controller program uh, remember we said auto hotkeys, which is something for Windows, um, and we, uh, you know, scan for this gradient blue uh, to detect where each frame is for the outside controller program, and uh, and then we basically um, uh, the the far left frame did I frame to the far right? That's incorrect. It's left. Uh, the frame to the far left signals that there's input. Uh, we scrape the color from that frame, so we basically are doing a frame buffer call and, and getting the information from that. And uh, we have that color mapped to a key in the controller program, and uh, it hits that, that key, but it hits it in uh, a sequence of a bunch of contexts. So, um, Let's see, yeah, so this is the PC controller. Uh, we used auto, auto hotkeys because Blizzard is okay with people using auto hotkeys for multiboxing. Uh, it's a scripting language. Uh, it has an API to get pixels, although it's kind of slow because you need to set up a context each time you grab a pixel. Um, so uh, reads the pixels from the frame, uh, takes an action based on that color, and this is just sort of the syntax, which is maybe not as interesting. Um, and we also, in the next slide, uh, have a Mac controller which is written in Objective C. Uh, it's way faster um, and it works way better because we wrote it uh, <laughs> as opposed to having to weird, use some weird scripting language. Um, and, uh, and I think that we could get the same speed out of Windows uh, if we sort of followed the same model, but um, we didn't take the time to write a C++ controller or something. So. 
Uh, so, what kind of cool things can we do now? Um, we can cast spells, uh, we can target, and we can move again, and we can do that all programmatically. So it's basically, uh, remember the pre 2.0 patch days, we've reverted everything back to that. Um, we can uh, re-enable a bunch of old add-ons by replacing their old calls, uh, although those old add-ons, because they're no longer being developed, are probably deficient in a bunch of other ways. Um, let's see, we've uh, written our own substitutions for one-hit wonder, decursive, that sort of thing. Um, we have a bunch of uh, heuristic casting modifications. So, um, you know, basically, you know, does this person need a heal? Should I cast this really end destructive spell on somebody? You know, the, the types of things that you would expect in a game like this. Um, so I don't want to say artificial intelligence, but um, there's definitely something close. Um, uh, and this is really fun. Uh, so even in the uh, pre-2.0 days, you could not uh, target or um, cast spells or do any of these things in response to, or you at least couldn't, couldn't cast spells in response to a in-game event. It had to be a hardware button press that triggered that cast spell by name function. Um, that's no longer necessary with us. Uh, we basically, if uh, I'm sitting here and I'm going to fight James um, and he starts casting a fireball on me, that event is triggered in my UI and uh, so that I can see his animation of him casting the fireball. And, uh, and when that's triggered, it can instantly just call our code and say, well, silence. And it will automatically just silence him. So you get this sort of <laughs> really <laughs> unfair. That was a few more. No, last one. Um, so let's see, we have a... Uh, uh, healing and DPS helpers, uh, they'll follow you around and there's a bunch of control functions to do it. You can do all sorts of things, trade items with them, like make them do stuff. Um, uh, there's lots of fun there. We started, you know, trying to run an instance and we would tag a bunch of these things onto us in the back because nobody wanted to heal back then. And so, um, so we could run instances, just the two of us, like hanging out. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. Um, Let's see, uh, using the movement functions, again, yeah, that's right. So uh, uh, notice um, we're using the word helpers here. Again, EFF, thank you for um, redefining our terms. Uh, you can uh, call a helper to you. Uh, this was kind of fun. We created this thing called BTP booty call, and you would <laughs> whisper it off to a robot, and I'd be sitting there in some zone fighting somebody, and, and um, the robot in, in some town in Shatrath or something would mount up and uh, fly all the way up as high as he could go so he didn't clip against anything and then he would uh, basically do XY coordinate stuff and just fly over to me until I'm fighting and all of a sudden this druid comes dropping in from behind me and uh, would just start healing. <laughs> so, it's pretty fun stuff. Uh, and then uh, basically um, Oh, so uh, that was a hop, skip, and a jump to do, and I'm sorry for the fanboys and everything, to do node farming or any of those things. Uh, on top of that, although the, all of that is broken now because it takes sort of a priori information of those XY coordinates to go there, and we didn't repopulate that for the Frozen Throne. Uh, we haven't actually been playing that much. We were a little freaked out on Tuesday because we were like, oh, I wonder if they've patched it and <laughs> totally broken the code because that would really mess our talk up. Um, but uh, they, they didn't. Um, uh, and so, let's see, uh, this is a fun one, we're going to demo this. Uh, you can use the follow functions to uh, follow someone in Battlegrounds. So we have like maybe nine characters, uh, which we'll probably be demoing how they work uh, over in the contest area. Uh, we haven't set up there yet because we wanted to give the talk first. Um, but uh, we have nine characters and we're going to demo how they work and we're maybe thinking of doing some sort of uh, like raffle or something to give a bunch of characters away because we don't actually play the game anymore. Done. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so uh, there, um, uh, there's a bunch of really cool things that you can do there. Um, let's see, a controller player. Um, oh, this is fun. Yeah, so James uh, primarily wrote the code that does this, but uh, controlling player now can so you know remember you know remember that uh, they let you multi box so you can have you know five or whatever uh, things following you around casting the same spells. Well, our code really lets that happen, so it's class diverse now. You can have like a whole team of healers and tanks and all this other stuff. 
Um, and uh, James wrote a bunch of code that uh, winds up triggering the other robots so that you can control their spell casting. So if your inventory is restricted to a particular class, now your, uh, your spell inventory, that is, uh, now your spell inventory is pretty much diverse across as many classes as you want if you write the code to do that so you can you know, do and things that you never expect. Um, stun lock forever sort of thing. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's it for this slide. I think that's some cool stuff. Uh, so we have a project. You guys might want to write some of this stuff down because the slide's going to disappear for the demo. Um, we haven't opened it up to the public yet because we wanted to give the talk and then just allow everybody to get in and grab the code and play with it, um, use the framework. It's kind of messy right now. There's some stuff that I wish we would have cleaned up, but we didn't. Uh, and it has some forums and a wiki, but all that stuff is kind of preliminary. Um, uh, we have a project on Launchpad, uh, which will have the source code, and we encourage you to branch what we've done and adapt, uh, because this is public now. They're going to try and um, probably stop it, so I would encourage you to adapt. Um, it won't be that hard. We've thought about the ways that they can stop this, and uh, you guys can pretty much um, get your yourselves around it. Uh, and. Um, we're GPLing the source. Uh, let's see, if developers wanted, remember we want that C++ version of the controller. Um, there's not complete code for all classes. Uh, I don't think Warrior or Death Knight or any of those classes have, um, have code yet, but you just follow a template for other people in your L set. Um, and maybe port some of those old add-ons that people used to like to the new API. Um, and we're moving on to other projects. So anyone want to take over the project? Uh, come and see us afterwards. Uh, that's it. So big conclusions here. Tiled background images are fail. And uh, monochrome text is win. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is try and show a bit of a demo of how this works. Uh, so this is a druid. Um, and this is uh, Warsung Gulch. Nobody pay attention to the names up in the corner. In fact, actually, I hope the resolution is so terrible you can't read it, Blizzard employees, so you don't ban it while we're doing the demo. We have a lot of other accounts, and we will just continue to. <laughs> um, and uh, so is it in PvP mode? Uh, yes. So uh, we're putting the robot in PvP mode. And uh, now we're going to go to the outside controller program. Uh, yeah, I mean, sorry, uh, helper. We're putting the helper into uh, PVP mode. And uh, so there's just a couple little things here. And we just hit start. Oh, wait, hold on. Is that key empty? No. Is that nine or zero or something? All right. And start. And then once you give the window focus, it should start uh, trying to do some interesting things. Uh, go ahead and click on the, oh, hey, oh, oh, no, what's going on? <laughs> oh, oh no. fail. This never happens. Um, so just. All right, good. Yeah, we're good. Go ahead and. Uh, All right. <laughs> Hold on a second. We're gonna start over. It's okay. We have we're good on time, right? So you guys can pretty much. Yeah. So this is the, trust. This is what's worth it. The the robot is fun, and so I want you guys to watch it, sort of enjoy what. Helper. Sorry. Jeez. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> they talked to me like an hour ago, and I have to remember the terms. Um. Okay, so you guys can start to see like a little bit of um, weird flashing up here. to see this little white thing? So uh, what he's trying to do right now is mount up um, so that when somebody runs by him, he can quickly uh, connect on and start following them. And in the corner up here, this is that left signaling frame. It'll turn white. Actually, is that off the screen a little bit over there? Uh, maybe. Um, so we're just going to wait to uh, get in here. Um, while we wait, we have 30 minutes. I think it's really fun if you guys play the game, if you want to ask any questions. Um, I have a green laser pointer, and I will blind hecklers. So, uh, so feel free to oh, get, a, get focus again. Click on the window. Oh, interesting. Just trying them out. Hold on. We're pro. This works very well, we swear. 
Yeah, it does. Oh, and we'll be demoing this the entire time in the, um, uh, yeah, okay, there we go. All right. Um, so we're just waiting to queue. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, Wow Glider um, doesn't really do what we do. Uh, we just entered Battlegrounds. Oh, and also, James, hands off. So um, uh, he's buffing everybody right now uh, <laughs> while we talk. Uh, so Wow Glider um, takes an interesting approach to doing this. They went the, I think, finding memory and modifying memory and um, working like that. People use this program called WowGlider used um, because Blizzard decimated them. Um, use this program to uh, basically, you know, level their characters and whatnot. Which I should say, uh, we tried to do some of that with ours in our first invocation of the program. Uh, we had two characters banned in the first day, so. Um, <laughs> oh, it's it's already all right. So there, it's going somewhere. Uh, yeah, questions. <laughs> sure. Right, so, uh, so he was asking how well it um, handles chat interaction with other players and uh, whatnot. And I will say this, so there's a little bit of, I guess you could call it, I still think it's heuristic, artificial intelligence. Um, so do you guys know what the AIML is? It's the AI markup language. The Alice bots are written on it and whatnot. Um, it, we uh, wrote a bunch of auto responses. So when people, um, oh, OK, ooh, got a heal. We're good. <laughs> Sorry, this is going to be distracting for me. I get kind of like ooh shiny when I'm watching these things. Um, so yeah, the uh, um, uh, what, what was I saying there? Yeah, yeah, no. yeah that the uh, um, the chat code. So we uh, basically put all these responses in based on AIML. So when someone whispers us uh, and says, "Hey, great heels," we say something um, sort of plausible back to them. Uh, <laughs> and um, and a funny story about this is uh, I have a warlock robot that I was uh, running through Battleground. Uh, yeah, uh, helper. <laughs> that I was running through Battlegrounds. And, uh, and this uh, GM whispers the helper. And um, GM is a game master. They're the you know, gods of uh, this little universe. Uh, James will help it along just to get it to tag on to other so people. So you can see the combat. Yeah. Um, it, this is just good for demo, but you can leave it, and it will do the right thing. Um, <laughs> hands up. Yep. Yeah, okay. So, oh, oh, he's getting kicked around. So, uh, so basically, the GM whispers it, and uh, is like, "Hey, how are you doing today?" And you know, the robots, like, I mean, helper is like, "Hey, I'm I'm doing just fine. How are you?" And and uh, you know, it, they have this little dialogue, and after about six of these, uh, the ro helper says back to the GM, uh, "Look, I'm really busy. I'd like to just get back to playing the game." <laughs> <laughs> oh, it gets better. So then, uh, so then it's programmed to just ignore the responses that the GM sends it. And, uh, and so the GM's like, no, really, you need to talk to me. And it just goes on and on. And it gets to the 10th response. And the, uh, the helper says, I told you I was trying to get back to the game. Welcome to my ignore list. And it actually calls the API calls and puts the ignore in. <laughs> So it turns out they have a little, a little hook that doesn't let you ignore a GM. Uh, and the next thing says, you can't ignore me. I'm a GM. Uh, you're banned. And basically kicks, uh, kicks the helper from the game. Uh, and so I get home from work and i um, checking my email. And I'm like, fuck, oh no. <laughs> uh, so I sent a response to the people that uh, handle the complaints. And I said, I, I'm sorry, first I should say that it logs all conversations, so I looked at that, and it was plausible. It was actually a plausible conversation. So I sent a response back and said, this GM was a total asshole to me, like, what's going on? <laughs> he kicked me off and, and banned my character. I was sitting right there, and, and, uh, and I got an email back with an apology. LAUGHTER and they re-enabled my account, and I still have that account. 
so that's how it does in-game uh, chat stuff. It also, you can control it. Uh, you can send it help messages and whatnot. Um, in arena. Inter uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> so it turns out, humans, you're still good at something. Uh, <laughs> It, uh, it performs okay in arena, but uh, it's not the sort of thing that's easy to farm. Um, I certainly play arena with robots tagged to my back as a primary controlling care. Oh, sorry, helpers. Uh, this isn't going to happen, obviously. My brain's incapable of figuring that out. And uh, yeah, so uh, I've, I've played it, but if you put them in alone, uh, they'll get crushed. Um, they just sort of stand there in the corner and heal themselves. It's, really funny, I watched a 30 minute battle once <laughs> uh, where they had like feared me off of the helper and killed me and then the uh, helper wound up standing there uh, healing itself for about 30 minutes while two people tried to kill it. <laughs> uh, but um, that doesn't win you points and isn't that effective. So, uh, any, any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, so, how are we modifying the Lua files? Uh, so, we're not really modifying any Lua file. This is an add-on. Yeah, this is totally um, uh, this is totally legit with Blizzard. There. Well, I don't. Yeah. Oh, I, I, so yeah. <laughs> um, so he's saying that we're kind of in the same domain as WoW Glider. Um, I, I think that there are some very subtle arguments that can be made. Uh, oh, what? Did we die? <laughs> um, it should resurrect, but there's kind of a bug that makes us quick. So yeah, there we go. Um, and then it'll just wait and do something. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I think there are some very subtle arguments that can be made, but I'd rather not really comments on that right now. He's still in appeals. Uh, yeah, he is in appeals. And everyone here hope that the WoW Glider guy wins that appeal because the way that Blizzard got that judge to define what copyright was uh, between the interaction of the running elements that are essentially instantiated on the machine and the, the user uh, is totally jacked up. Um, it's, it's very, very strange, and I think the EFF can talk a little bit more about that, but um, basically makes uh, almost anything by that abstract definition uh, a circumvention technology uh, in our domain. So, um, Let's see. Uh, do, do I want to queue questions? We don't have a microphone or anything, but I... Okay, so you... I know I was going to... I'll get you in next time. Well, people mash the key. So the question was, do we have any evasion detection? Um, I, we don't. Uh, I definitely think you could inject some sort of variance in there, um, you know, make the robot look more like it's a handy helper, <laughs> like it's a, 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 a human or something. But, um, and we don't try and avoid warden. Again, auto hotkeys is the um, program that a lot of people use for multiboxing. And so, um, yeah. Uh, I think that would be tricky. I'm going to get the guy on the wall and then I'll grab you. Uh, all of them. Uh, let's see. So, Warsong Gulch is probably the most. I'm oh, sorry. Which battlegrounds is it recommended for? Uh, it works really well in all of them. Um, uh, so if you're going to farm a V, you should do it during the day when people are there uh, at night. So, those of you running uh, battlegrounds AFK bots you suck because you break uh, the major function of how this works. Uh, your quick bot goes into battle, uh, battlegrounds. Our quick helper goes into battlegrounds. And then we follow you, and you stand there doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and and that doesn't help. Healing. Um, so uh, uh, where are we on the healing meters now? Number two. Oh, that's good. <laughs> uh, Number one for the horde. <laughs> I bet that other guy has PVE gear, Probably. so we've got PVP gear. Um, 
And uh, so there are certain battlegrounds that this is better for, um, uh, but they all work equally um, well in certain times of day and in certain contexts. Uh, there was somebody over, yes? What's the score? Uh, what do, what's the score in game right now? Is that the okay? So uh, that was the we were second on the healing meter. Go ahead and you can bring it up again, James, if you want. Oh wait, what? Alliance one. Oh, Alliance Four one. Zero. Yeah, well that's because that's because yeah. uh, I, if a good player were to you know step up, we'd heal him. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, the leveling up bot uh, helper, uh, the thing that we tried to do, so first of all, uh, Blizzard really doesn't like that. And uh, we think it was just really obvious. Um, you know, we were starting, it was the first day of code that we were testing, and we hadn't sort of added in any of this stuff to make it look human uh, and plausible, and it, um, it failed the test because someone walked up to it and said, you know, hey, uh, what's this? And then reported it, and two accounts got banned. So, uh, let's go back here. Uh, it will continue to uh, uh, heal itself uh, or other players that are around. Uh, if it's, uh, say, a warlock or something, it will continue to do DPS. Uh, did everybody hear the question? It was basically if somebody dies, and we're not following anybody, what does it do? Um, so it will continue that piece of combat. Um, if it's a rogue, this is really funny, uh, the rogue will just go to town on the druid's back, but it has this buff called Thorns, which does a little bit of damage each time, and it's healing itself, and so rogues will kill themselves, trying to, <laughs> trying to kill the, uh, the druid, at least. Um, we also have a priest, warlock, uh, paladin, shaman. Um, there's all, all of these classes work. Um, if everyone dies, so if this was a DPS bot and it killed people, which is really funny because it does, um, this mage once was casting on the back of it and I was like, well, I'm going to be honest here and see if this passes the Turing test and not touch the keyboard. And the, uh, the mage decided to move around to the front of the warlock and, and the warlock decimated the mage and like was almost dead so the mage just kept going at the back. Uh, it will then mount up. So if it's out of combat, it will mount up and wait for another friendly player to uh, run by and it will tag onto the back of them. It follows the signal of whether it should be mounted based on uh, whether or not the person it's following is mounted. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, how well does it do in PvE instances, like uh, dungeons and such? Um, so it, it does really well in PvE instances. In, in fact, there's another druid that I don't have here that has the full tier sets for um, uh, Naxxaramas or whatever, uh, the tier 7.5. And uh, it works really well, so what you do is you take the follow mode off and then you just move it around uh, in the instance with all of your guildmates and it will make these decisions quickly and you can give it priority lists, you can tell it um, these are tanks, uh, these are lower priority and it will um, it will try and do everything. You can also put it into a like raid healing mode where it only puts one hot on all raid members unless they're in a really critical state and stuff. Uh, questions? Um, go ahead. Actually, I'm going to leap over you in the red shirt because the guy behind you is. Can you get it so that in the event the character is following dies, it would actually be resurrect? Uh, oh, yeah, it does. It, does. It, it will. Yeah, you'll act fact. It already did it, I think. If you look down here, this is the rebirth buff, I'm pretty sure. Uh, the rebirth spell, and it's in cooldown, which means someone died and it resurrected them. So, uh, let's. I'm gonna try and step back in the room. Brown shirt. Uh, timing mechanisms. Like, uh, what do you mean by that? Like. We. Yeah, so he's asking if there were, uh, so in the beginning there were counters and a bunch of other stuff and Blizzard took that stuff out. Uh, we didn't re-add that stuff. Uh, we started modifying the game after those things existed and so, you know, we tried to scratch the itch that we wanted but if we had had those things disabled on us, there's a chance we probably could have done something. That's a little bit trickier. We have a callback system instead. 
Uh, so what happens is uh, you make certain decisions and if they're time-based or if they should happen or, or be checked over and over, we have a whole callback system in place. And, uh, oh hey, look, we're, we're helping the flag person. We're gonna win. <laughs> And so when it goes back in, so it's when these functions are called again, they're sort of re-entering, and it goes and calls the callback and does a check for something that happened in a previous uh, instance of the code run. So, oh, there's is there a lot of red around? Oh, okay, yeah, we're doing great. Uh, oh, it's the other flag carrier. I see what's going on. <laughs> So, hands off, James. <laughs> uh, how are we on time right now? Anybody know what time it is? We have 18 minutes left? Eight, eight minutes. All right, well, we have plenty of time for more questions and more fun, so, yeah. Go on, yeah, sure, Black Hat. Uh, so there are, um, oh, in response, legally or programmatic, like, you know, legally or technically? Oh, no. <laughs> so the question is, uh, will things that we've done here make your game experience worse in the future? This is an important thing for Blizzard to understand that, uh, yeah, there are certain things they can do. <laughs> that will make your game experience worse because of what we've done. Honestly, I don't think it's the right direction to go. The community, you know, is already upset about this sort of thing. Did we win that flag race? Okay. Um, so the community is already pretty upset uh, about certain things and they're kind of losing developers right now. Uh, basically, their recent add-on changes and they slowly lose developers because they're becoming disenfranchised with, with Blizzard. I think that either re-enabling these functions and making this code useless uh, or, you know, just letting it be uh, would be much better for the community, obviously, but I, then we wrote the code, right? So. Yeah, we're a little biased. Yeah, a little biased. Um, yeah, so there are things. What? I let the flag carrier? It let the flag carrier die? Yeah, well. Well, you know, it's a druid. They only have hots, you know? It's not like, <laughs> that's not our fault. It did the best it could. Uh, yeah. Was it out of mana? Is that what We're happened? losing. It's not because our robots suck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, top one. of the healing meter still, though, right? <laughs> so. Helper, James. Helper. Helper. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, the multi-boxing stuff, uh, I would hope that they don't disable that because I know that's a lot of fun for people and whatnot. Um, Blizzard. Yep, go on. Yeah, so let's talk about the frame context a little bit. Uh, up here at the top, uh, if you've noticed, oh good, look, it's being active for us. Uh, there are white boxes, a signaling frame that says, hey, there's data. And then each one of these boxes at the top here uh, is a different context. So it might be a targeting context or an inventory context, a, a container context. Um, you know, there's a context for targeting, a context for taking an action, a context for your pets targeting, your pets actions, this is very cool. And, uh, and basically each one of those uh, colors is corresponding to a different type of button press. And uh, we just line them up and detect the colors, map them to their presses, send the events, and it basically does everything uh, that it would need to. Uh, so that's what the frames are. Really simple, right? I mean, it's kind of a bit of code to make this work, but it's not like some major security breakthrough. Uh, it's well within the framework. It's pretty simple. Okay, I'm gonna go with this guy right here. Uh, so the question was if, uh, so there's uh, dual boxing websites uh, or dualboxing.com or something to that effect. Um, and uh, do we recommend any sort of dual boxing programs? We, we kind of did this in a bubble. I, I actually don't know of any, there were some on the UI forums, okay. So places that offer help to people. Um, 
I wrote fanboys there for a reason. And uh, whenever we try and go to the add-on community to talk about what we want to do, so when we wind up in their IRC channels and we're trying to solve a particular problem, uh, they uh, first ask us a very legitimate question. Why do you want to do this? And, you know, because they might want to say, you're doing it wrong and you should do it this way. And when we honestly answered what the end objective is, um, they usually flame us and then ban us from their channels. <laughs> so there's not a very good community that I know of, um, uh, although there were some people. I want to do a shout out to Cogwheel, who is a developer that's done a lot of work here, and he's become a little bit disenfranchised with Blizzard. But a discussion that we had had on the forums led to this sort of fancy binding mechanism uh, that we do for keys. And he doesn't know that's what it led to, uh, but <laughs> that's what it led to. So um, I don't know. If anybody has sites, you know, feel free to recommend them uh, for that stuff. More questions? Anybody? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Is this a plug and play now that you've made it public? Uh, can, can people download this and access their using it? Yeah, you know, uh, it's, it's plug and play uh, to a certain extent. There it takes a little bit of knowledge. Um, we didn't. Uh, we didn't focus on trying to make the the you know lame end user uh, layman end user all the same thing I guess uh, you know make this easy for them. Um, so there's sort of you know go into this script and edit a bunch of stuff you know the kind of way you would if like you were programming in Perl or something like that. Uh, change all these variables and and uh, set this stuff. It doesn't really make sense to you. Um, and it's not too, too well documented, all the functions that are there. So it's sort of, you know, the source is the documentation right now. But um, it could be better for sure. So, so I want to note real quickly, uh, he did 644,000 healing. And the closest alliance was at 400,000. So. Yeah. That's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to go over here to the blue shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. All the source code uh, is going to be GPL'd and released. So the question was, will we release the Objective-C controller? Uh, we're going to release everything, um, so long as our attorneys think it's OK, I guess. But yeah, we're going to release everything, hopefully by tonight. But, uh, let's see, over here on the wall, white shirt. Oh, I couldn't really hear you. Can you set it up on your laptops while we're here? Yeah, yeah, we can yeah, help you set this up, absolutely. Yeah, come on over, that's what we encourage you. We would like to show you how to use the API and write class code and do this stuff. So if you're into it, yeah. Um, let's see, what time is it right now? It's, we have, we have 10 minute. minutes left until, until what, 3 o'clock? We have one minute left? 10 of right now, okay. Let's take like a couple more questions. Uh, let's do front row. I have that shirt, by the way. I hack charities. That's awesome. Yeah, go on. Oh, oh, <laughs> it actually we had to write some stuff there, so we don't want it to heal. Yeah, let's let's go ahead. Go ahead. Let's go to Strands of the Ancient. Uh, so their question was, uh, how well does it work in vehicular combat? Um, so this is siege weaponry and whatnot. Uh, we try to detect whether or not something's a siege weapon, and we try not to, to heal siege weapons. Uh, occasionally, I think we buff them, but uh, that's just a bug. That shouldn't happen, because it doesn't work. And then it just buffs over and over, but that's inexpensive right now. Um, and uh, what's really funny is that a consequence of, of all of this is that occasionally, so there's this farm BG field, you click on the battle master to enter, and uh, it will click on the siege weaponry and hop into it. So it's following somebody, and it's periodically clicking the center of the screen. And so it, uh, it will click onto the siege weaponry and enter it, which, of course, gives it the protection of the siege weaponry so nobody can attack it. And then it heals everybody around the siege weapon. It's really cool. Um, let's see. Uh, I'll do this guy, because. Winers. Would you feel as though they'll have the same backlash when they hear about what you guys are doing? And do you think Blizzard will have the same stance about protecting what you guys are doing the same I, way they protect multi-boxers? 
Uh, I am hoping that they take the same stance as protecting what we're doing as multiboxers. So the, the BG thing is kind of interesting, but really there's a kind of cool thing of being able to walk around with your guild in an instance or, or to be able to tag these things onto the back of you. You're paying for multiple accounts, you're running on multiple machines. Uh, it follows all the same categories except that they may not like programmatic decision making, uh, which is a bit tricky. So I don't know exactly what Blizzard will do in response to that. Uh, as for whiners, uh, <laughs> we kind of chose DEF CON because we didn't think you guys would whine. Uh, <laughs> we thought it would be cool as opposed to being, you know, hung or something at BlizzCon, so. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I'll. Uh, I would just warn potential users. I would say that it's just Yeah, yeah, so, okay, so now that this is public, uh, you take your lives into your own hands, uh, your characters' lives, uh, because they can write signatures in Warden. Um, they can try and disable the add on, and they can try and be jerks to you the same way they were. Uh, with uh, other people like uh, WoW Glider. Although, I think it's arguable that we're not destroying any economies, this is the developer community, two of us, uh, trying to say, you know, Blizzard, come on. Like, we were having fun. Uh, we thought this is a whole new game, uh, you know, a whole new way to, to release a game. Uh, and you took away a bunch of functionality that's actually pretty cool for developers. Um, that being said, uh, Warhammer Online uses Lua. There's a lot of other games that are going this direction. And uh, think of these techniques in that context, because other games can probably also uh, do the same thing. Uh, yeah, sure. Over here. Black. Uh, actually, I'm going to go with the black shirt first. So. Um, so, any Blizzard employees in the audience? Uh, I did want to um, say this one thing. Uh, we, I think, are pretty good people. We try and help charities, and uh, <laughs> we, you know, we try and do other things. Uh, we're not out like murdering people or anything That's like it. that. That's it. Okay. So, anyway, uh, they like to pierce the corporate veil for DMCA stuff and totally ruin people's lives. So, if you're a Blizzard employee, just be cool when you tell Blizzard about this stuff. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>